Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Man, I'm breaking down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got a lot of stuff to go over, so let's jump right in. First up, crypto lending. Is it the ultimate killer app? And we're talking about DeFi and how I can see this actually being bigger for mostly for small businesses just like mine. Also, a very interesting article written by an international tax lawyer and CPA talks about the role of central bank digital currencies, how they're coming faster and faster, and how America is actually falling behind dramatically, and they need to do something to actually step up to China and the rest of the world. And lastly, new research shows massive internet spying going on from several crypto sites, and this is going to be important, especially if you've visited these top three sites or downloaded specific programs for Google Chrome applications. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the market. So it is June 28th, around 2 o'clock Texas time, and it looks like Bitcoin is holding strong at around 9100 Ethereum 224, Tether, Tether's Tether, XRP, watch out, 17 cents. And everything's doing pretty well. Looks like Bitcoin SV is up massively. Huh, amazing. And then Chainlink, everything's up across the board, but we did have a little bit of a hit a couple days ago. So we'll see exactly how it comes out, but looks to be like it's going okay. Before we jump into today's stories, let's do a little housekeeping. First up, in the description of every one of my videos, I give you recommendations for different YouTubers out there. And I've watched a lot of them, and this list will actually change as time progresses, just based on my tastes and what I'm actually listening to and really I'm actually am into. So for these four right here, I will say this, I can only provide you so much information, and these four will kind of get you covered around the bases. So first up, we got Crazy for Cryptos, been around a while. I love Digital Dave, got a very great outlook and he's got a laid back approach and just works with all the things that he talks about. Jungle Link is a very XRP heavy uh, YouTube site and uh, if you're into XRP, definitely listen to him. I tip my hat to that guy. He always brings positive news about XRP. Two new ones, Coin Bureau. This is a guy named Guy Named Guy and uh, he does a pretty great job of explaining things and giving not just daily news but like reviews about what's coming up and what's actually going on. And lastly, also Crypto Nobs. He's got a very calm approach. He's a UK based YouTuber and I like I listen to his stuff uh, every now and then, but good stuff. But specifically, I like to talk about Coin Bureau and Guy. He did a fantastic video a couple days ago where he talked about the best Coinbase alternatives and he gave you five different examples. I actually, if you've been around the, the channel for a while, I do not recommend Coinbase or Coinbase Pro for a number of reasons. Uh, first off, they keep having crashes. They've had three crashes in four months, and I find it unacceptable for a company that is, has $8 billion. They, I think they should be a little bit more proactive than reactive, and this should not keep happening. Secondly, uh, there's an issue with the analytics uh, harvesting. So they are partnering up with the IRS and the DEA. And I don't mind so much about that. But look, I've been uh, paying my taxes since, since I was a 15 year old kid. And we all go through the KYC, we all go through the AML, we get our 1099s, we, we pay our taxes. So when is enough enough? How much reporting do they actually need to have happen? And that's two of the things so I've actually gotten away from. And Guy here, he actually told me about a third very fascinating thing about how Coinbase is actually tracking what you spend your cryptocurrency on. And I thought that was uh, amazing. So definitely check out his video on his channel along with Crypto Nobs, Crazy for Cryptos, and of course Jungle Link. Now for these exchange fees, and I also take a look at the recommendations as far as like exchanges and wallets, you can find this spreadsheet in the description of every one of my videos by clicking right here. So Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, obviously I don't. Gemini I've been using pretty heavily as well as Active Trader. Uphold, Abra, Simple Swap, definitely using. And then there's a new one called Celsius uh, DeFi Wallet. And I'm just, I'm just taking a look at it, but it looks very promising right now. Kraken is still evaluating, KC, why not me, and Cash App. So if you're looking for alternatives, those are definitely the ones. Also check out Guy's video. Lastly, I wanna give a shout out to Amuseit. They are helping me with the website. I usually build my own websites for my businesses, uh, but Amuseit reached out to me and they do a lot of things with um, specialty type of businesses and I agreed to it and they're doing a fantastic job so far. So if you don't know, putting together a website and it's going to be free. Uh, people are gonna be able to go there, find a lot of information about cryptocurrency digital assets, especially uh, this year and the next. I think it's going to be a huge year and I think people need to understand not only what it is, but how it all works, why they need to get into it, and also how to avoid scams and short change and, and all the different problems that we have in this space right now. So 
I can only do so much as far as videos go on YouTube. I need to put together a better, more comprehensive type of website, which will bring people in. It'll educate them. It'll quiz them. It'll figure out, you know, how much they know and don't know. And then they kind of like, you know, get them on their way with the basics. So again, for Amusit, I want to say thanks so much. So far looks pretty good. And uh, we'll see how it all works out. Uh, Peter Viviani is the owner of that. So thanks so much. And I'll let everybody know when it's ready to go. And uh, of course, this website will be free. You can do whatever you want with it, but it's mostly just for educational purposes. And I'll get it out as soon as I'm possible, uh, able to do that, along with all the rest of the stuff I have to do. So first up, DeFi, the ultimate killer app, crypto lending. So crypto lending, one of the fastest growing industries in the blockchain eco has made it possible to earn yields and borrow capital using digital assets. According to a report, which we're going to take a look at in a little bit, by research company Credmark, the volume of crypto backed loans increased sevenfold in 2019, reaching $8 billion. That's a lot of money. Experts speculate that crypto lending will attract more investors into the crypto market by increasing its liquidity. You can think of lending as this incredible grease that just pushes everything forward at a much faster rate, states Paul Murphy, CEO at Credmark, and I couldn't agree more. Look, lending is huge. It's huge for any business, and uh, I guess apparently it's huge for a bunch of traders. I'm not a trader, but uh, I do own a bunch of small businesses. I can tell you right now, uh, lending is king. That's what brings my next point. States here, in fact, a significant amount of crypto-backed loans are used for margin trading operations. Look, I am not a trader. I don't uh, get into margin trading or leverage trading or anything like that. Um, I think it's gambling. This is coming from somebody who lived in Vegas for years. But if that's you, hey, God bless you. You know, good luck to you. But uh, I just don't see it. And I think what I see moving forward, uh, DeFi and uh, loans, crypto loans, I see them more for small businesses, and I'll explain a bit. So while most crypto lending businesses rely on centralized custodians to manage their customers' funds, DeFi lending platforms allow peer-to-peer -peer lending and borrowing operations with no middlemen involved. So let's just quickly take a look at that actual report. So there is the crypto credit report, and it was put out in Q4 2019. And of course, it talked about how everything had increased by a 7x. And if you've listened to the channel for any length of time, you know that I hate banks. I think banks suck, and I don't like uh, any of them so far. And I will tell you one thing. One is universal truth, and that is that banks will give you a loan when you don't need it. It's amazing when you have uh, like all the money in the world and your credit's super high and uh, you have a ton of inventory and everything's going great. They're like, hey, can we give you a loan? I'm like, I didn't need, I don't need you guys now. I need you guys like six months ago. Where were you? And of course, you know, they're like, oh, well, we're just banks. So if you do decide to get a loan, first of all, if you're going to go for loans for small business, uh, it's, it's awful. Uh, second of all, you, you're probably used to it by going to get a loan for a bank or for a house. And uh, you gotta, still got to jump through all those hoops. You got to look at all the different history, all the different things. It takes 45 days to close in just a bank. And for small business loans, it could take even longer. So when we talk about DeFi, uh, I think this is really the future for small businesses as far as getting loans. Look, you can only grow so much as you have liquidity. One of my businesses is online on Amazon and I can sell a ton of products. I can move a ton of product. I'm only limited by the amount of uh, liquidity or money that I can use to pay for those units by my manufacturers. If I can have more money, I can make more money and I can actually grow my business exponentially. The problem is getting those funds in. So I believe moving forward that DeFi small businesses will be the rocket fuel. I can't explain it any better than as far as like uh, decentralized finance and banks themselves, which was explained in this two minute video. This is from Celsius, Celsius Network, which I've been reviewing. I think it looks very promising. Just got to do, you know, uh, check out everything, make sure it's uh, as fantastic as it sounds. But as I was doing my research, came across this video. It's just a minute or so. I'm going to have to take a listen. But this perfectly describes banks. In theory, banks are a good idea. Bob needs some extra money. He goes to his bank. The bank gives Bob the money. And over time, Bob pays it back, plus some interest. Everyone wins, right? Well, not if you're Bob. Banks understand how dependent people are on them. This makes them powerful and ensures they are the ones that make the rules. Rules that are in their best interest, not people like Bob. Need a credit card? A small business loan? Glad to help. Just sign here, here, and here. Want to show your crypto as part of your assets? 
Forget it, Bob. Things like crypto, like Monopoly money. And that's the truth. I actually put that in at, as far as some of my holdings. And they're like, what the heck is this? We've never heard of this. This isn't This isn't even like legitimate thing. So I had to actually remove it. So what they're talking about here, totally accurate. Why does it have to be like this? It's time for a change. Some smart person once said, the world needs banking, but it doesn't need banks. Banks generate obscene profits from taking your deposits and giving them out to borrowers. Celsius is different. We take crypto deposits and use them to lend dollars back to our community so that you, our members, can keep the profits, earn more interest, and pay less for loans. While banks focus on their own profits, our model is built in the community's best interests so that people like you, me, and Bob can enjoy the financial freedom we all deserve. With Celsius, you can earn up to 5% interest on coins stored in your Celsius wallet. Think of it as your crypto savings account. And when you... So that's, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but that's pretty cool, right? I have a wallet. I'm going to check it all out. But yeah, whatever you have in your in your wallet, your Celsius wallet, you get interest on. And I think it's, you know, like right here, it's like 4.59. Depends on the on the thing that you have, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum, where you can actually use Celsius itself. And then off you go. Now, this is not a sponsored video. Uh, the video that I talked about here in the beginning, where I was talking about crypto taxes, uh, that was well, actually the one before that was a sponsored video, which we partnered up with CryptoTrader.Tax because, in all honesty, everybody's got to do their taxes, and this saved me a ton of money, a uh, ton of time, time and money, hopefully. So with this one, it was just kind of laid out everything about what I was trying to talk about as far as banks and how much they are awful. But if you can just look at this, it just makes a lot of sense, right? We have have our uh, cryptocurrencies. Let's say we don't want to cash them in. We can borrow against our cryptocurrency. Uh, they can give us fiat money. We can use what that for whatever we want to, and then we can just pay it back, which I think this would be like the worst time for me to cash in, or maybe even you, I don't know, to uh, cash in my Bitcoin or my Ethereum or my whatever else I have. So if I do that, and then uh, it goes up. Well, that's just a waste, right? But if I could just loan, you know, loan it against my uh, actual cryptocurrency, I think I'd be a much better place. Also, it's uh, fantastic if I could get a loan from that and not have to pay capital gains. So win-win. That's what I think. Anyhow, moving on to this actual report itself, and I'm just going to give you the highlights because I'm not going to read 30 pages. Way too much. So here's a snapshot like they talked about. Loans from went from $1 billion to $8 billion in one year. That's a pretty good increase. Deposited uh, 1.5, 13.5. Actually, everything just went up. So if you're looking at industries about how they're actually progressing, this is a great snapshot. Let's take a, let's just go down a little bit more. And this is what I did in college. I just read the conclusions. Uh, closing thoughts. The role of exchanges and OTC desks in crypto lending is becoming harder and harder to ignore. Their need for liquidity is shaping the industry. I think everybody needs liquidity. DeFi protocols like Synthetix and Unisnap, IV products from private lenders like Celsius, Cred, and BlockFi, and funds like Templar and CryptoLend are supplying this liquidity. These dynamics are a good sign. They show that crypto finance is maturing, but we have to recognize that these are still early days. In order for the industry to continue growing at its current pace, we need more diverse demand for credit. We need more businesses like mine and yours, if you had a business or all these different businesses out there, because businesses whose primary activity is not trading. And I will say this, for all you leverage traders out there and everything else, I mean, like I said, I mean, if you're out there and you're getting decentralized loans uh, against your cryptocurrency and then you're just, you know, putting on uh, trading and leverage trading and you get liquidated, I mean, then you're really super wrecked. So not only are you in the hole, you're in the hole bigly. Um, I would not recommend it that. But uh, again, uh, it's whatever you want to do. I just wouldn't do that. And I think that this is what I'm kind of preaching on, harping on. Let's get away from all the trading, all the different things that we do, all the craziness. I mean, if you want to trade a little bit, sure. But I always feel like really this isn't what this space is supposed to be about it's supposed to about be about uh, money generation and wealth and and uh you know locking it up and just holding on and but it just seems like people are like no no there's a faster way so i'm gonna do it this way again that's just my theory i just dollar cost average very boring that's it anyhow going on business again businesses primary activity is not trading to be able to issue debt instruments to fuel their growth and we need consumers to be able to borrow to meet their needs this ground is well trod in traditional finance. We know how it works. We have a roadmap. DeFi protocols, however, 
have the ability to significantly alter that roadmap or create a parallel roadmap altogether. That's why this space is interesting. That's why they're going to keep doing what they're doing. So I couldn't agree more. I think I'll be watching these guys um, and just see how it all works out. But I think DeFi really can be really a fantastic weapon. I shouldn't say weapon, uh, asset uh, for small businesses to get that liquidity. And uh, we'll see how it all goes. I'll let everybody know. Let's move on. Next up, not like before, digital currencies debut among, amid COVID-19. This was an interesting one. And I'm just going to tell you that the person who wrote this, let me go all the way down. This was from Selva Ozelli. Uh, Esquire, CPA, international tax attorney, certified public accountant who frequently writes about tax, legal, and accounting issues for tax notes, Bloomberg, b &A, and other publications. So we're taking a look at who's writing these articles. Um, we like to see who's putting pen to paper. And for Selva, we will give her a pass. Looks like there's a little credibility there. So what this is all about is really talking about central bank digital currencies, regulations and laws, how they're all going to be morphed and changed. And I think that with central bank digital currencies, and we'll get into it, uh, these have to happen faster than soon, or sooner than later. So here it states, Giles or Giles Coughlin, the chief currency uh, analyst at HYCM, had the following to say, the volatile market conditions that have some, the volatile market conditions that have come about as a result of COVID-19 has investors looking for safe haven assets to protect their capital. Price of gold has risen, as has the value of the USD, uh, as these are some of the leading safe haven currencies. And I would also put Bitcoin in there. Interestingly, it looks as though market interest towards digital currencies are changing as part of social distancing measures. And it makes sense, right? I mean, we even saw China, they would pull in their, their yuan and just destroy it because they had to get rid of COVID-19 because it was laying dormant on the, the paper cash for up to three days. So they had to do the best thing. And for me, like when I go out and I'm at like a Walmart or a Target or whatever else, and I see people whip out money, I can just see the, the look on the cashier is like, ugh, money, thanks. And she have a debit card. But it's the same thing here. So I think uh, this just puts digital assets and cryptocurrencies in the forefront because of what is happening in the world. Anyhow, moving on to the CBDC. The Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia warned in a paper that with the introduction of central bank digital currencies, Central banks may arise as deposit monopolies, replacing commercial banks and disrupting the existing banking system. J.P. Morgan Chase also expressed uh, the problem that the dollar is under threat due to the continued growth of CBDC traction. So really, J.P. Morgan Chase, a bank, which I don't like, uh, they are heavy against uh, central bank digital coins. And I will just say this, uh, there's an easy way around the paper dollar losing ground and that's to make a, a u.s central bank digital coin or the digital dollar sooner rather than later look we did a, a two-part video series which we talked about the digital yuan and i pretty much just laid it out and said look china's going to dominate china's going to dominate and they're going to take over because they are leading the forefront of what is going on as far as digital currencies. And uh, America is just dragging its feet and dragging its feet. And they're kind of just resting on their laurels. They're like, eh, who cares? You know, the US dollar is the, is the reserve currency, so we don't care. Well, guess what? When you get too sloppy like that, and I know people are screaming at the screen, but it can happen. It can happen and happens all the time in business. Uh, people just rest in their laurels like, no, people will keep coming because it's the standard. No, it's not how it works. You have to actually always improve. And I think that uh, we're falling behind. That's just me talking as an American. So when JP Morgan Chase talks about how they feel threatened because of these central bank digital coins, and I'll, in all honesty, when we talked about this in the digital yuan, there was a report that came out that China is not going to get rid of their retail banks. They're actually going to incorporate them when they roll out the digital yuan, which they've actually already rolled out. And they're going to use their banks. They're going to use Alipay and all the different uh, online processors and payment services. So they're not leaving anybody behind. They're just, you know, centralizing uh, the uh, their currency and the central bank digital currency. And I think what can happen is, is that can really spur international commerce because it'd be so easy to pay like that. Like uh, when I used to uh, deal with Chinese factories, uh, it was a real pain to get them paid. But if I had some kind of like, oh, I don't know, some type of app that I could just send over money within, you know, seconds, something like this, hey, why not? 
And um, actually, that's what's going on right now with Starbucks and uh, McDonald's over there. Anyway, I'm moving down. Yiv Mersh, an ECB board member, pointed out that the number of central banks already working on a CBDC may be a bit higher, with 80% of 66 central banks surveyed indicating that they were actually doing it. So uh, it got 80%, and it's been a lot of them. I mean, it's been every everything from the Middle East to Europe to Japan to everywhere else in between. Everybody seems to be into the central bank digital coins currency, except for America. Anyhow, at the same time, 19 companies in China, including local chains of U.S.-based companies, Starbucks, Subway, and McDonald's, like I just talked about, are trying out stable coins through a pilot program launched by the People's Bank of China based on its mobile payment system instead of the SWIFT system. And I got to tell you, the SWIFT system, glad it's going away. If you're not familiar, it was a creative right around the 60s or 70s. It's archaic, but it's what we've been using for the longest time to transfer money all over the place. And it's just awful. And it's one of the reasons why I hate banks. It takes too long to transfer my money from one bank to another. Moving on, China has been collaborating with many countries to develop mobile blockchain-based cross-border payments. The East Asia Digital Currency Initiative is expected to consist of the yuan, the yen, the Hong Kong dollar, the South Korean won, with the yuan and yen accounting for 60% and 20% of the digital currency's value, respectively. China is also collaborating with Singapore's Central Bank and Financial Regulatory Authority to develop a CBDC. Do you see how that works out? They're just gonna sidestep everything. Like, look, we don't need the dollar's world reserve currency. If we wanna do trade amongst ourselves, we'll just cut you guys out and we'll just use it between e each other. So who needs you? Russia is also leading another multinational digital currency initiative with BRICS and Eurasian Economic Union countries. In the Eurozone, the Banque de France has become the first to successfully trial a digital euro operational on a blockchain, according to an announcement, and also the Saudi Arabian Monetary Authority, creating a digital currency with the United Arab Emirates called ABER to be used for cross-border transactions. And they've already done liquidity and local banks and all that stuff. So uh, you can see it's moving at a rapid pace and that's how it should actually work because that's what happens with innovation. It's just that when you try to stop it, you usually just get passed by. Lastly, it talks about COVID-19 has led to an increase in digital finance crime. Uh, these findings are quantified by cybersecurity firm Cypher Tracer. Recently stated that 1.4 billion in cryptocurrency has been stolen by malicious actors in the first five months of the year. And you know where they do that? They do that right here on YouTube. So this was sent to me by a subscriber. They go, hey, Dan, look at this. Uh, this is up next in my autoplay. This is an ad for an Elon Musk 5,000 Bitcoin giveaway. Wow. So what this is all about is they're going to tell you, if you give us one Bitcoin, we'll send you two. If you give us two Bitcoin, we'll send you four. And just nonsense like that. And I actually did a poll on this channel. and I had 800 people, roughly 800 people respond. And about 30% had said they had been scammed out of money. So if YouTube, which is big on the community, keeps letting this happen, I see them getting hauled into court. And as a matter of fact, they already have because Ripple fought a lawsuit against YouTube. This was back in April. And they said, look, you keep... Uh, approving these stupid ads with our CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, and people are getting ripped off and they say, think it's us. It's your responsibility to police your community. You're not doing it. And that's actually going on right now. So, And I will say this, some people will say, ah, but YouTube won't lose because they have deep pockets and those big corporations and whatever else. Well, they just lost one not too long ago in 2019 where they have to pay $170 million for alleged violations of children's privacy law. That's not the big thing. You have to understand. So what was going on was all the different uh, children channels on YouTube, children specific channels, which you've probably seen your kids watch, whatever else. And uh, those type of channels, they were collecting data on children. I mean, not that they really were. I don't know if they were actively or not, but they still were. And there was a complaint. Uh, New York said, OK, we're going to shut you down. FTC of New York Attorney General. And they said, look, you're going to stop that. They said, no, we're fine. And they brought them to court and they said, boom, you're busted. Pay us $170 million. But on top of that, all the ad revenue for all those channels, now they can't have ads on those channels. That's why you see some of those uh, kids' channels just went away because they can't be monetized. And it's because of this. So uh, YouTube not only lost on the actual settlement, but on the lost income and revenue 
from all the ads. So if you don't think they can lose, they can lose. And I can see big problems coming on because of this and also because of stuff like this, which keeps happening, which gives us credence to all the different scams that we're going over right now or actually at the end of this video. But anyhow, as a result, U.S. government agencies such as the SEC, Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, and the FBI have all recently issued alerts addressing a range of illicit activities targeting the financial industry and playing on the fears of investors, and they have released education materials that make people aware to help them avoid digital currency-related scams. Amazing. YouTube can't do that. They also have continued engaging in multi-jurisdictional investigations, charging those who engage in complicated money laundering schemes involving cross-border cryptocurrency transactions. And I'll just tell you real quick, we covered this a couple of days ago. Uh, this was from the uh, uh, Eastern District of Kentucky. The FBI and the special uh, unit, they actually pulled in um, some Romanian nationals who had swindled people out of their money out of their cryptocurrency and brought them in and they busted them on rico charges <laughs> so they didn't they didn't care where they were at like look at if you you know mess with our citizens we're gonna pull you in and we're gonna we're gonna bust you and that's exactly what happened so when we think about like oh well you can't do anything well yeah you can and all these different things that are going on it seems like the noose is tightening a little bit more so like with google and youtube and they're allowing these things to happen, they better watch out because I think there's a reckoning coming and uh, they need to be careful. Just saying. Anyhow, moving on to the last part here, it states, uh, quietly on May 12, the IRS issued a statement of work describing its need for consulting services to support a taxpayer examination involving virtual currency to ramp up audits of digital currency holders. Let's say that one more time. To ramp up audits of digital currency holders. So if you're in America, you're going to see this in your 1040 form, and you have to file by July 15th if you haven't done so already. And it states, at any time during 2019 did you receive, sell, send, exchange, or otherwise acquire any financial interest in any virtual currency? They didn't say cryptocurrencies. They didn't say digital assets. They said virtual currency. So it's a wide swath. And I will just tell you, if you're watching this channel, you're probably going to say yes. And I think you should, because let me tell you, uh, somebody who's been through an audit himself, IRS always wins. Um, and that is the main reason why I actually did this video, which I talked about in the beginning, as far as crypto taxes. And it's going to tell you a lot of things. And I use a company called Crypto Trader. And uh, they are fantastic. And it was a sponsored video. Uh, so you can check that out. But I'll just tell you this it took me less than 30 minutes to do all my transactions for over three years. It was, it was awesome. So if you're worried about taxes, uh, talk to those guys. All right, let's move on. Last up, new research shows massive internet spying, several crypto sites. So this is all coming about because of this place called a web domain registration company named Communigal Communications or Galcom. And out of the 26,000 domains that they registered, 15,000 uh, have are malicious or suspicious types of domains that have websites that are collecting all types of data. The lengthy list shows a number of crypto and Bitcoin related domains, including CryptoLimited.org, CryptoCoiners.net, uh, Bitcoin Compass, and Bitcoin Investment Strategy, as well as others. List even included Binance Ref.info and Binance Register, although it's not unknown if the sites are involved with Binance, which I don't think they are, but whatever. Also, there's another problem with browser antics, or as I call shenanigans. Awake also reported over 100 cases of issues around Galcom affiliated uh, Google Chrome extensions in just a three month time span. So, these extensions, and you can, if you have Google Chrome or even Brave, um, well, not Brave, I mean, Google Chrome, I mean, the apps are right there. Brave filters out most of the, the junk. Um, with Google Chrome, when you download these apps, they, these extensions that you do, they can take screenshots, they can read your clipboard, they can harvest credential tokens stored in cookies, they can grab user keystrokes. So like if you're putting in your seed phrase or something like that, uh, they can just grab those. They can just take copies. And before you know it, you're like, where's all my crypto? Oh, it's gone. And this just happened a couple weeks ago. Somebody who had 11 Bitcoin, they downloaded some Chrome app and uh, some scammer took it. So here's the thing. Just to protect you, the easiest way to do this is if you ever get any kind of information like from Binance or Ledger or some other type of big company or like, hey, you got to download this thing, don't go to the Google Chrome store. Go to the official website, 
download it from the official website. And actually, to make, be even more careful, uh, go to the official website and send them an email. Go, did you tell me to download this thing? Because I got this email. Half the time, they'll tell you no. It even happened to me. Um, for Ledger, there was an email that I got that said you have to download this new special patch because everything else won't work. I went to Ledger first. I asked and they go, no, 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 that's a scam. Uh, so don't do that. You would have lost all your money. So just be careful out there. When in doubt, go to the official website. That's the big thing. And then this is even worse. To date, they, they've, they've had 32, almost 33 million downloads of those extensions. And this only accounts for the extensions that were live in the Chrome Web Storm as of May 2020. So there could be more. The movement has its hand in essentially every category from healthcare to oil. And again, this is massively a big problem. So just do that advice, um, go to the official website, download it from there, send them an email. Usually it takes just like 24 hours or so and you should be okay. Unless it's Coinbase, they might take one week or two weeks. Or even eToro, they're like the worst these days. I don't know what's going on with them, but uh, awful customer service. Uh, so just be careful out there. That's the big thing. And then if you don't know, uh, Brave Browser, it does a lot of great things. And one of those things it does is it uh, uh, blocks trackers and ads and it saves you a bunch of time. And I believe it gets rid of some of those malicious uh, type of things in their, in their app store. So if you want to download the Brave Browser, there's a link in the description below. It looks exactly like this. And uh, this is exactly what I use every single day, all the time for all the videos. So I highly recommend it. And that's it. That's it for today. So I want to say uh, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you got some time, uh, we're going to go over scam of the day. And this could actually help you if you're wondering, like, what's a scam, how to avoid those. So let's jump right in. So scam of the day was created by me because I was tired of people getting screwed out of their money. And um, we started this in January 2020, around the time that I started this channel, actually. And we've done pretty good. You know, we've got a lot of different scams removed. So I want to say thanks to everybody. Really appreciate it. But um some things we just got one more to do for today and um if all you got to do is scroll to the very bottom and uh, click on this link it'll take you to this video here and that's actually jack dorsey from twitter not some guy who just got out of prison <laughs> that's a that's a that's a look uh but that's just jack and it's saying here that hey we're having a bitcoin giveaway and when you when you look at this there's two things you want to look at first let's look in the comment section to see if it's a scam well it looks kind of scammy, right? But maybe Mark D and Paul and KC, maybe they just are haters, you know? Maybe they don't, maybe. So what we really want to look for is a asymmetrical giveaway, meaning uh, here's the official rules. Please send Bitcoin to the address below and one payment uh, and we'll get, we'll, any money sent will be doubled. So essentially what they're saying is if you send us one Bitcoin, we'll send you two. If you send us two Bitcoin, we'll send you four. All you do is scan this QR code here, and that's our Bitcoin address. And Jack Dorsey here will uh, rightfully uh, just send you some Bitcoin. So here's what I'm going to tell you, and I want you to remember this for as long as you're in cryptocurrency. Uh, you are not special. Uh, nobody's going to give you anything for free, and that's how it works. So even if there is a legitimate person that's giving away stuff for free, just treat it as a scam. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If you think this is a scam, what I would do is I would go right to Twitter help services, or if it's if it's CZ Binance giving away a, a free Bitcoin, I would go to Binance, send them an email. Same thing we talked about with the other thing. Um, send them an email and go, hey, are you giving away free Bitcoin? Uh, they're going to tell you no. Uh, if you go to like Ledger, hey, you guys giving away free Ethereum? They're going to tell you no. Everywhere you go, they're going to tell you no. But So if you don't believe me, that's fine. Don't believe me. Uh, sometimes I'm a moron. So just go out and uh, find these places, go to the official website, send me an email, it takes about 24 hours and they'll get back to you and uh, they'll tell you it's a scam. So what do we do with this? Well, we have to protect the community because there's new people coming in and that's you know one of the big reasons why I wanted to create this uh, website so I can uh, help educate people. So what we're gonna do is we're going to help those people who can't help themselves, right? So we're gonna downvote this real quick. We're gonna click on these three dots click on report and we're going to say mm, spam misleading choose one come out here scams and fraud and then we're going to click next and we're going to say hey this is a scam please remove and that's it and we're going to click report and close and that's all you got to do so if you got the time that'd be fantastic i'd really appreciate that 
And uh, last but not least, I want to say thanks to all the supporters. So underneath there's a little join button. Um, you don't get like, there's no like special like members only stuff. I give everything away for free, but uh, it's more like a tip. So the level one, uh, that's like a, it's like a dollar 99. And uh, that's like uh, a, a tip for me and the channel. So I say thanks to all my level ones. Level twos pay a little more and I give them a shout out. So uh, shout out All Right Soft. When Mullet, my man, helped me hold it down the premieres, uh, I got myself, who else? Dave Plummer, straight talking guy, Grant Sharman, Bruce Wood, Baking Benjamins, they do the things with Tezos. So if you uh, need someone to bake Tezos, check out those guys. Noel Flippin Vegas, Martin Lewin, Michael Ralph, William Howell, Crazy Crypto Canuck, Tessie Ryasaki Positive, Troke, oh, I said that right, LLC, JC Durex, Code, Crypto Veritas, John Miller, The Office, Elmerg, Michael Jeffrey, The Kells Show, Mage Research, Andrew Herrera, Terry Prospery, XRP Carolina, whatever, AE, and Hero Soap Company, they do soap. And uh, last but not least, my email is dandigitalassetnews with an S at Gmail. That's for like business inquiries and things like that. But if you get one from dandigitalassetnew with no S at Gmail, that's a scammer. So just ignore it and uh, put it in your junk folder. But he, I think he's trying to do something with um, trades and things like that. But I get so annoyed with hearing about him that every single video now, I tell everybody to avoid him. And that's it. So thanks a lot for sticking with me. Appreciate it. See you on the next one.